All right, so the uh, speaker's installed. Now what? There we go. Doesn't look too bad for something you're not going to see. All right, all right. Time to get back to the F-150. Yes, the excursion is running. It's doing just fantastic. There it is. It's right there. Uh, but, you know, I'm still kind of in the middle of doing the budget-based build on this. And I'm going to be completely honest with you. As soon as I got the component that I was waiting for in the mail, I went ahead and installed it. But I didn't really... Uh, What's that thing I didn't do? Oh yeah, read instructions. Um, so actually I have to take all of this back out again just to get to that component so I can retune that so that way I can tune the amp and get the most amount of kick out of this subwoofer. So that's what we're gonna do today and that's actually gonna complete the build for the, the base and we'll go from there. All right, so let's get to it. <laughs> Why are my tools so loud? Oh, how about that little thing? Uh, push in, clip, bingo. I actually have a small little confession to make. The last time I took this apart to put that component in there, I lost one of the screws that holds in the, the actual stereo bit. Uh, some of you are probably seeing this for the first time, but that's not actually the radio. This down here is. Yeah, I actually lost one of these screws and it's floating around down in there. And every time I hit a bump, I can hear it. So I'm gonna try and fish that out today too. No, no, don't lose that one. So this, this thing right here is the actual unit that I was waiting for. And it just goes into a T, it goes in between the stereo and the harness. And this gives me the RCA outs that I needed for the amplifier. But my problem with this piece was is like I said, I didn't read the instructions and there's this little gain knob here that's supposed to be all the way down. And I didn't do that. I kind of put it in the middle. So I need to put that all the way back down and leave it be. Now, let's see if I can find that screw I lost. I can just wad all of this together. Let me just kind of toss it back into place. I just lost another screw. <laughs> uh, uh, we'll be right back. All right, all right, all right. While myself is looking for that other screw, I'm gonna probably address something here real quick. Some of you are wondering what type of sound quality I'm expecting to get out of this stock head unit with that aftermarket piece that isn't really meant to be with the truck. Um, I'm not expecting very good sound quality at all. I'm more, more or less looking for just a little bit more bass. And that's what this whole setup is going to get. If I want better sound quality, I need to replace this entire structure here, starting with this whole unit and just the parts to switch this over to a conventional head unit, like a double din or a single din. 
like the Sony and Alpine or whatever, it's gonna be like 400 bucks. And I'm just not looking to spend that kind of money on this. So anyway, back to myself. And we're back and I found that other screw and put it in already so I don't lose it. Now you're all probably wondering why there's this little connector here for a plastic tray. Well, that's because in some trim levels of the F-150, there's a speaker up here instead of this handy little tray. Uh, since I got the poor man's edition, I don't have that luxury, but I'm still gonna plug it in anyway, because who knows what it does. Okay, so now that I've got all of that put back together, what I'm gonna do now is address something that I noticed with the subwoofer when I was putting that in. And to do that, we're gonna go into the garage and I'll see you there. All right, so now that we're back in the garage, we're gonna take a look at the subwoofer itself. And now I've already taken the screws out of here, but behind this, speaker lies a little trick from the late 90s early 2000s and you're gonna see what that is here in just a minute here we are. bingo it's full of cotton <laughs> this actually kind of prevents the subwoofer from doing a lot of traveling and yeah it, it kind of tunes it but not really by much so what we gonna do is take it out. So in turn, the, the cotton actually kind of muffles the base and it, and it limits the travel that the, speaker can tra that, that the speaker can do. Therefore, not letting it hit as hard. At least that's my scientific explanation on that. And you'll get people arguing with you all day about it. But the 12s for the excursion sitting over there don't have it so and those suckers hit hard so there we got that all back together now all i gotta do is throw it back in the truck and give it a test and i'm probably gonna piss off my wife because she just started a new job where she's working from home and the truck is parked right outside the room in which she's working so this ought to be fun so anyway i'm just setting this up here for now so i can hook the wires in and then i'll set it back into position Come on. It's your home. Don't you want to go in your home? <laughs> Duh. Let's go ahead and whip out the phone. Bring up epidemic sound so I don't get hit with a copyright issue. But I'm still Shush. This is a good one. I forgot, it's got a long intro. Yeah, I think that's gonna do it. That's better. That's a lot better. <laughs> the wife just texted me. Is that you? Uh, yes, it is, dear. <laughs> oh, now all I gotta do, I need to get the subs back in the excursion. I need to put those 12s in there. But that's gonna have to be a different video for a different day. Today, I think that's gonna have to wrap it up probably gonna be a little short. I'm sorry, honey, for disturbing your peace. <laughs> Bass tunes in the F-150, and I'm glad I've got it now. Woo! Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.